Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. And George and I are going to be very happy to have with us our good friend, Everett Oliver. Say hello, Everett. Hello, Everett. Uh, <laughs> I was really hoping if I said his name wrong enough times, it right. would get stuck in your head and then you would screw it up. That's right. You keep doing that. That'll probably work. He's too professional. Exactly. So we're, we're all remote here. And uh, But so are you guys watching the show. If you've got a question for Everett or for George and I, put it in the Facebook chat room, because I know Jeff Holman's hiding in there somewhere, taking mm -hmm. down all your questions. And uh, we got anything else exciting going on, George? Nope. In that case, voiceover body shop <laughs> right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. That didn't work at all. I didn't even say anything that time. I just let Jeff do the talking for me. There we go. All right. Anyway, uh, the 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 lockdown continues here in Southern California, and it's like, this is a wonderful place to live. If only we could go somewhere. Uh, and I take it you're just hanging out in your apartment. <laughs> I'm very lucky that I can actually go outside. Um, we, we are still allowed to do that, even in California, believe it or not. Yeah, that would. Be. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 not fun time to be celebrating the holidays. Not <laughs> not the way we wanted to celebrate, but we're doing our best and cooking and baking and decorating and you know everybody in the neighborhood that would normally be out of town because nobody lives in L.A. Well, they got nothing to do, so they decorated their houses. There's so many Christmas lights. It's a good in year Venice and all around. I've never seen so many Christmas lights here. Yeah. It's the fifth night of Hanukkah, so I have to go light candles when we're all done here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had my mom over yesterday, who's always in isolation. We sort of keep her isolated. And, uh, you know, pancake, you know, potato pancakes and brisket and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it was nice. It was good to, you know, just, you know, have family there, but a very tight packed family. And I hope all of you guys are having a really you know, making the best of this holiday season. Uh, Just watch the video on YouTube. Type in SNL, SNL, Christmas time for the Jews. <laughs> have you ever seen that animation? Oh, yeah. I have. So with with Darlene good. Love and uh, yeah. So good. Because it, it's very true. <laughs> you know, Chinese restaurants love us on Christmas. Yes. Anyway, it's time to introduce our guest tonight because, you know, we're about voiceover, and our guest is really a, a voiceover guy. Been in the business a long time. He's been in it for 25 years. Currently operating his voiceover company, formerly known as My Booth Director. But that's, we're going to erase that now. He specializes in professional directing for voiceover auditions. He was an animation demo co producer, a private coach for commercial and animation, as well as a career building consultant. 
let's welcome once again our good friend Everett Oliver. Everett, welcome Hi. back. Thank you. How are you guys? We're doing okay, as you heard. So, uh, how has the uh, the COVID epidemic, pandemic, the Rona? Know, yeah. The, the, how has that affected your bicoastal being? Well, it has stopped me from getting on planes and visiting everybody back east. Yeah. Um, but my business expands so vastly. I mean, I speak. I have. I work with kids now. Um, I'm getting auditions very, very, very frequently now. Um, lots of private coaching. Lots and lots of newbies coming in, especially from the TV and film world. It's gonna say the um, newbies are not new to acting, right? They're right, more they're new to acting. voice acting, Voiceover. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Voice acting for sure. Um, but I have been actually getting a number of you know newbies as well into the business. Um, because they're just trying to find, you know, a niche and, you know, they've been told that they have this great voice and, and I so lovingly in a way, give them the smile and go, mm, mm. okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh -huh. Now let's get to work. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what, what percentage of people do you think actually are, have the talent to do it? I mean, we've, we see, I mean, George and I, and you, we see people coming oh, I want to be in voiceover. Okay, you know, you could go to law school. There's so many other things you could be trying that uh, could be a little bit easier. Are you finding some? I'm sure you're finding some very talented people out there. Um, I'm fine. I am, um, but I'm also, you know, sending them to, you know, they need to go to class. I'm sending them to basic. You need to go take another general acting class, or if they're up to par in their general acting. They definitely need to take an improv class. Mm. Nine times out of 10, they haven't taken improv within like a year or two. So I'm like, oh, yeah, go take an improv class and then reach back out to me. Um, so then I can just, you know, at least because I want to hear their story. I'm more or less, um, I want to find out everything about them. And then I can easily guide them in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So you're, you're, as George was saying, you're seeing a lot of actors. I mean, I've seen that too. It's a lot of people who were, you know, screen actors. They're here in Hollywood or, or in various places and suddenly they can't work. They're like, oh, I'll try voiceover. And, and boy, they're in for a real surprise, aren't they? Oh, totally. You can, you can hear the difference from them, from them acting on stage versus, you know, speaking into the microphone. I've had a couple of clients who are actually screaming. <laughs> into the microphone great and, great and i saw in my in my facial expression as you all know i'm very animated i do okay can you please stop screaming uh -huh. but my mother told me to scream oh okay put, put your mother on the phone <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so you can scream at her that's going to cost extra though <laughs> oh yeah i had a, i actually had a kid who was auditioning that she was literally screaming and her mom was in the room at the same time and i was like oh I need your indoor voice. <laughs> Use your yeah. indoor voice, yeah. yeah. And she's like, oh my God, she sounds so much better. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, I'm always teaching people is like, you don't project. The louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. And so if you've got marginal acoustics, you, you know, you definitely want to be able to, you know, not make make sure that you're not reflecting off the walls too much, and, and you so that's why yourself out, <laughs> and right, and where and wear your voice out in the same process. So, I mean, as, as we were saying, you've been in the business a really long time. I mean, not since the beginning of time, but you've been there for a fair amount. Uh, you've seen, obviously, seen a lot of things change. Uh, you know, especially in what clients out there are looking for. And what are you seeing today that you're hearing from casting directors and uh, from the industry in general? Or is it still all over the place and nobody really knows what they want? A um, couple of things that, um, you know, the home studio, I am hearing that their home studio really has to be intact and really up to, you know, par. Um, that's one of the things that I'm definitely hearing that um, going forth. But I'm really, it's the acting. I mean, I think the thing that 
a lot of people are doing is they're just auditioning and they're not really c connecting with the copy. If I really want to get serious and get into it. Explain to us what that means, because I hear that from coaches all the time. Connect with the copy. Well, I mean, you've got to be able to get the words off the page. You've got to be able to find the nooks and crannies. I always call it like a negative and a positive. You're reacting to someone instead of just reading the copy. You know, um, they're not they're sticking too close to just the specs of the scripts. They're not being creative and being able to add their personality to enhance that character. They're playing it too safe. They're worrying about the voice. They're worrying about booking. They're worrying about so many other different things that's going on in their life that they can't really hone down and just have fun, you know? So, you know, you've got to approach the script, you know, and really you've got to come, go through the whole entire script, read the scene direction, really understand how it is to make this character come to life and, and make it pop. Stop worrying about who you're competing up against. I think they're all in their head about that, that, oh, everybody's going to do this. But you have to bring you to it. And I'm one of the, I'm one of the um, few people who I really like to home in and understand how you tick as a person in order for me to get the performance out. So, you know, as going back to your question is, you know, I, I know that cat, I know that agents want to hear that they want to hear more of them, you know, as well as the casting directors to make them stand out, right? you know, and they're not doing that. They're just basically sticking to the specs of the script. You know, I would say do one pass that's close to the specs of the script and the second to your second take, step outside the box, do something that's totally unusual, insane, crazy, to have fun and see how that plays out. Because if you're not right for that specific episode or show, you might be right for something else. And I've seen that happen. And actually, one of my clients, we worked on a um, an audition and he actually booked something that he was you. but we worked on a, um, a character. He didn't get that character, but they added him later on for a couple of episodes. So it does happen. That's well, that, and that's going to make some people very happy to hear that, that, uh, you know, that eventually you're going to book something. Right. You know? So you, you were saying you've got you've 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 got to be able to, you know, know how you're different. How do you help someone find their voice? Um, grounded. I want to make sure that they're grounded. I have to I have a <laughs> <laughs> I will put this out loud. I have a an intuitiveness that I can tell. I tell people to uh, go play. I told an uh, actor yesterday, I said, you haven't played enough. So go play with your children, whether or not video games. Go do something fun. Uh, I know we're all in COVID, but you're allowed to exercise. Go exercise. I told them to go play tennis, uh, go swimming. Um, th they need to be able, they have to physically shake their body. They shake their body. Then they can should go ahead and audition because by them to be tired, they're not thinking as much. Mm. That's one little trick that I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's always important to, to get your physical energy up to do something. You know, some, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do some jumping jacks and then, I'll, mm -hmm. and then I go in the booth and I'm <gasps> helps to be in better shape when you do that. But go, it, go fast walk, Dan. You should fast walk around the block. I, I as my mom says, go jiggle the fat. Okay, that just sounds. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm gonna <ignore> that. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like something your mom would say. Actually. <laughs> Me and your mom needs to have a consultation about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her to call me. <laughs> Giving you bad advice. <laughs> so, so what are so what are some of the things you look for when when you when you first start working with somebody, and and you, and they say they say I have a great voice, and you say yeah, okay, fine. How do you get them from out of their own head? What's what's one of the techniques you might use to do that? Um, I, you know, it's the acting. I'm listening specifically for your acting. I'm listening um, for how will you um, connect to the character. And then I could vocally place them. <clears throat> they start naturally talking to me. Then I can go ahead and tell them, oh, you, this is this is possibly your money voice is right here in the center of your throat. Or 
when you're going down here and you're forcing. I'm like, that's not you. So I just, you know, I play with them. I talk with them a lot just to get them out of their head, just to get them relaxed. And then um, I go ahead and I just start working with them. <clears throat> All right. To get them out of their head. I got to get them out of their head. The key is to really relax them and get it out of their head. I make jokes, you know, just to, you know, warm them up a little bit. Um, sometimes they, we started getting into a discussion about what's going on personally. Yeah. You know, I'm just kind of sort of just different with them. You know, tell me, tell me your hobbies, tell me about your family, you know, to get them out of a mood. Right. Exactly. Once again, if you're just joining us, our guest is Everett Oliver, who is a voiceover director. He's a guy exactly. <laughs> voice <laughs> acting director. Yes. And, 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 and I want to say he's forcing it. Dad, don't force it. Just relax. I'm, 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 I'm good. Voice I'm good. Acting director. Voice, voice acting, acting director. director. Okay. Sing songy, George. He sings. Okay. Uh, if you've got a question for him, I mean, I got plenty of questions, but if you have a specific question for Everett about uh, technique and stuff like that, throw it in the Facebook chat room if you're watching there right now. And I know, see, there's a bunch of people in there. So go in there, ask your question. Jeff Holman is sitting there going, I want some questions so I can copy and paste stuff. He'll get it in there. So uh, ask your questions right now, and we'll get to that in the next segment. Uh so Everett, you know, every day we open our email, if, you know, those of us that have been doing this a while and people who are just finally getting themselves established and we see the specs, you know, an agent or we're on a roster or something and they're like, they shotgun blast uh, an audition to you with the specs. And usually, you know, I'll look at it and go, I don't fit those specs. Why should I even bother to try and do that? Yeah, I could try and stretch myself a little bit. And maybe I could try this, except that I'm not 22 years old and can't pass for 22. Uh, in which case, I might actually pass on it. But when you're looking at the specs, as you were saying, people are doing the specs. How do you get yourself outside of that? How do you, what's, what's a good technique for you're looking at this? Okay. They want somebody, you know, it always says the same thing. You know, somebody you'd like to have a beer with or, or, or your girlfriend who you'd like to have coffee with or something along those lines. It's like, so I immediately go, all right. So I'm sitting across from a bar, which I haven't done in years. So uh, what's a good way to, to look at the specs and go, I, I see what they want, I think. How do you go at it? What's how do how do you break down a script from there? I mean just by I would I mean the thing is I would find some emotions. I would get four or five emotions that kinda stick to who you are and speak to your inner truth. And I would apply those emotions to the specs. I mean you have to follow at least some some of the key words or some of the adjectives, but go ahead and add some more you know, adjectives to that to bring out, you know, a better read. You can't just stick specifically, you know, to the script because, you know, from a casting's perspective, since I worked in casting for so many years, we listen to the same stuff over and over and over again. And literally after we hear maybe one or two words, that's it. We go to the next person. We go to the next person. That means you're clearly not using your imagination, you know? So I would, that would be the first thing that I would do. Um, um, improv, you know, add some improv to your reads. Now, what I will say this, I probably will get in trouble, but I will say the people on the East Coast can't improv as mostly commercially because they have been told by casting directors on the East Coast to not improv as much. Whereas we have to, we on our coast, on the West Coast, we're allowed to do pretty much and play around. So um, be careful of that. Why do you think that is? Why why do you think there's a difference? I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's just that that's just this just how the East Coast is. They just really are just there's no lot a lot of room for them to move around and play. You know? Um, you know, I tell I tell actors when I'm listening to them that uh this is not our coast. So be careful and conscious as to who you're reading for and which coast. And a lot, a lot of casting people are not going to say that. There is a general overall read if you're doing campaigns. But as far as when you're doing, you know, animation stuff, um, when you're auditioning for our coast, 
um, it's much more of a mush mouth sound and tone to it. Whereas we're not over articulating our words and speaking clearly. Um, so, yeah. I mean, and that's a, that's a problem. Say, you know, now I know our audience pretty well. Some of them sure. I, I know by, by name, a good deal of them. Uh, but you know, so, our demographic is not 18 to 25. It's right. it's not even 25 to 30. It tends to be more, mm -hmm. you know, middle age, you know, or as, mm -hmm. as my drama teacher in high school used to say, middle age is five years from wherever I am. Um, how George and I are looking at each other. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm way past middle age. But how how do you. What's a good way to put sound, this? How, how do you sound? How do you, how do you try to sound younger? No. Or, yeah, you can't. I mean, it's it's you really can't. I mean, there is a trick for I do something with um, some of the girls to make them sound teenagers, but literally you, you really can't. Um, you know, so really you would just nicely put in the email that you're going to kindly pass on the audition. You know, why waste your time if you can't? I was just working with somebody today and the specs read 40 to 50. And I was like, there's no way you sound 40 years old. You realize that. Don't do it. Just pass. Right. Um, but I'll give you a little small tip. So underneath your neck are your lift notes. So if you take your lift notes, you hear me speaking? Sort of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I hear that. So if you take your lift notes yeah. and you compress them, you yeah. hear my vocal quality change a little bit? Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. This ten, this little small technique will make you sound just slightly a little younger yeah. to your mm. read. Not yeah. everybody can yeah. do that and not everybody can hold that for like quite some time. So you have to get used to it. Don't squeeze it to the point where you can't breathe. Do not try to sit home alone. Oh, by I, I wouldn't do <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. <laughs> but some some people. But I do teach. Do I do do that technique when I'm in class with everyone, just to make them sound maybe slightly, just very slightly. But sometimes they have trouble finding their lift notes. Uh, so, um, but not everybody can do it, and not not everybody can maintain that for two to four hours. <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I find it fascinating. You know, I've got. A box in the back here with all the old, you know, demo reels and air checks from 1980. And um, what was that year again? 1980. <laughs> and and I'm listening, and I'm like, who the heck is that? I mean, I mean, you know, I was, yeah, it was like I sound very, very much higher pitched, and and uh, I'm like, it doesn't sound anything like me anymore. I mean, I. Clearly, I've gotten a little older since then, but uh, slight, just very slight. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm, I'll try to go back and imitate that, and I'll go. It's not not happy. Even even if I do this, it's not going to do it. Too so, cartoony. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I, you listen to Terry Gross, you know, on on Fresh Air, and she'll say, "Here's an interview I did with the guy who just died," and right in, in 1987, like. And you're like, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, it goes up like a third, you know, or uh, it's like a third octave. It's really interesting. I, are you, this is what comes to my mind, because I'm thinking, well, now we're all working remote. I can get away with all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you anybody try to get away with using any kind of voice processing? Because, I mean, we've been doing that for many years for singing. Who's to stop, what's to stop a voice actor from using a, something that has like a formant or pitch adjustment software? Yeah, I, I, I cheat it. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure some people probably. I mean, there's this <laughs> one of the other coaches. I'm sure is listening. <laughs> um, there's this thing about normalizing your auditions. Mm -hmm. um, I I fight all the time. I I don't think your auditions need to be normalized. There are some people that say they should. There's some people that say they shouldn't. We haven't got a collective answer as to. Um, uh, I did hear some, you know, an agent, I think I spoke to an agent, um, said, just leave it alone. I've talked to a couple of casting directors. They said they don't really care. So it's that, who knows? So right. I'm sure people are doing it, but the, you know, but the casting person is going to know. Oh yeah. They're going to hear it right away if it's, if it's, you know, process and go, mm, 
Passive. Well, until until they aren't, until they can't anymore tell. That, that, right. that difference is, that's happening. I think next year, that's going to be my, one of my projections for next year is that mm -hmm. people are going to start doing those kinds of effects to play other roles and it's going to be convincing mm. enough. There's already deep fake things where you can oh. sound like a celebrity. Right. So, yeah. Well, that that's an interesting point. Um, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I find you know because you were talking about normalizing. If you record it right up front, which is what George and I are constantly teaching people, if you get it mm -hmm. right up front, if you normalize, it shouldn't do anything. Yeah, okay. it shouldn't change much at all. Right. You know, which is really the test to see if you've done it right, and uh, so that's our advice about that. Once again, we're talking with Everett Oliver, who is a uh, a voice acting director. Did I get that right this time? I'm smiling. Oh, good. <laughs> That's <laughs> the most important thing. If you've got a question about, about voiceover technique, he's one of the best uh, coaches here in L.A. and in the business on both coasts. You're bi-coastal. Is he like coastal uh, or traveling all over the planets? I should yeah. say, or used to. If you've got a great question for him, please put it in the chat room, and uh, we will get to that question in a bit. Um one of the now you 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 also help people with their careers. You give them career advice, and how do you mm -hmm. how do you help people? What is, what is it that you're you're telling people? And are are you telling them like maybe this isn't the business for you, or you can really really do something here? You get a tough love. You yeah. get a tough love, uh, ever. Yeah. I'm I'm born and raised in New York. Uh, <laughs> enough said. Killing them gently. I tell the truth. No, I mean there's a certain thing that I listen you know, for, and, and I try, you know, I guide them and I give them all the necessary tools and information. And I also send them to the other people as well, just to say, this is the person who you need to start off with. Um, you sound like you, you know, they tell me what they're really interested in. Once I kind of understand what they're really interested in, then I can say to them, mm, you have a, a niche for video games or, you know, you, or, you know, I can also hear, you know, maybe audiobooks or narration. So I listen to really how they speak. I learn a little bit about them, what they really want to do. And then I bypass all the, you know, BS and I go directly and tell them, this is what you need to do. Um, so I'm an excellent listener. <laughs> it's amazing how people want to know what to do and then never do it. Right. You know, which you is... Know. And I send them to the marketing. I send them, you know, all over the place, the conferences, um, tell them directly, these are the, uh, the coaches who specialize in these areas who you need to go ahead and eventually meet and coach with. Um, you know, so I give them a full perspective of when I go ahead and counsel them. I have, and I actually do follow-ups, believe it or not. I have, um, I do check-ins with them. Those are my favorite. When you go ahead and I, sometimes I have time to just give them a two second call. And right. You know, it's like being a principal and then you know they did something wrong and they're like, mm. I, I, it's okay. You can breathe. You've got three seconds to tell me what's happening. So I have you in the back of my mind. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so I pay because I have attention. notebooks on everything. Yeah. So I pay attention a lot. I have a whiteboard that I look at and I have people on my whiteboard and I check on them regularly. Excellent. So, yeah. That's great coaching mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Taking notes. Mm -hmm. Taking notes, not taking any prisoners. All right. Well, once again, we're, yeah, we're we're uh, we're talking with Everett Oliver. And again, if you've got a question for him, I got a few more things I want to talk about. But if you have a question about voiceover technique or you know really about what your style is, should be or whatever, throw it in the chat room once again, and we'll get to that question in a bit. Um, you you were now. I remember when I first arrived here in L.A. Uh, and you and I were talking. You were you know you were a a, a booth director. Uh, you were, I can't remember which agency you were at. What was that like? And, and, and what really went on there? Um, day one, didn't know what a booth director was, had over what 75 people that would come in and audition in person and just thousands and thousands of copy from commercial to animation to video games. And was just like, Ooh, Okay, so I'm supposed to direct the actor on this. And then the agents would come in and say, oh, this just came in, they need to read this. Oh, and they need to read that too. And I'm like, whoa. So it was 
an overload, but it was a good training for me. It, got, it allowed me to really home in on my skills, but it also gave me the opportunity to learn each of all of the actors who I usually represent their personalities. So I was able to, I think we had over 200 or something people on the roster. So I got to know each and every one of them. Um, and it was great. I mean, it was a lot of work. Um, uh, sometimes the agents were listening to the auditions. Sometimes um, they didn't and they allowed us to make the, you know, the decisions as to whether or not we were gonna send it to the clients. But it was just a nonstop from 9.30 to about maybe six, uh, listening to about probably about 500 auditions to between, yeah, I say about maybe, I say no more than through, I say no more than 500 auditions a day. A day. On a day. Oh, so, you know, your ear gets tired, you know, of listening just to, you know, so we knew right away it's like, oh, and sometimes, you know, the thing with, with, actors don't know is when agents put you on a roster, they're putting maybe 10 in on you. Maybe they'll give you, I'll, I'll take that back. They'll give you, maybe they'll put 15 people on there, but they can only send their top, top 10. So we were doing that and we were like, nope, nope, they didn't make the cut. Nope, they didn't make the cut. So it's important for you to, when you're sitting in your auditions, to really, really bring out the best performance you know, on there because you could be cut just like that. And now with everything happening with COVID, who's to say that there's actually still booth directors that they have for the agents? So your agents are probably listening to your auditions directly. And they're probably just like, oh, nope, not sending that, not sending that, not sending that. So, uh, but that's what the volume was back then. It was just constant, constant, uh, you know, our lunch to the grind. Right. Um, you know, yeah. and I did it for five years straight. Till there was smoke <laughs> coming out of your ears, probably. Oh, I was done. <laughs> you were toast. I was done. I didn't so, even know my name. I was how done. much has the quality... Okay, I'm going to always talk from the sound quality perspective, not so much the acting, but mm -hmm. the sound quality of the audition that people are sending in. Has that gotten better over the years? And is it gotten better since they've gone to home studios or what do you think it's gotten better for sure i think everyone is more or less they're paying attention now more or less to the sound quality um i'm still one for the acting per se um sure. you know because i think at this point you know the agents are like we'll just send it you know we'll just tell tell the clients oh the home studio we'll we'll figure that out later um, but I will say, yes, the sounds has definitely gotten much better. And everybody's just more conscious of it because of guys like you guys and and um, people on the East Coast who have been saying, get your sound quality up, you know. Yeah. So, because but, they I mean, want to wanna use clean, you know, especially for commercials and promos and stuff. They want their copies, to, you know, your sound to just be clean so they can go straight to air. Animation stuff is a totally, in video games is a totally different beast because they're going to bring you in. You know, or not bring you in, but you know what I'm saying. They're going to yeah. go ahead and they're going to just call you in anyway. Right. You know. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Everett Oliver. and We're talking about, uh, you know, how to really approach your auditions and things along those lines. And uh, again, if you have a question for him, throw it in the Facebook chat room. I see we got a couple. We'd like to get a few more in there. And Jeff Holman will uh, will get that into us in our next segment. But right now we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Everett Oliver here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Hello. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. You've heard great things about the ACX Masterclass. Maybe you've been watching it, waiting for the next class, looking for the best price, and knowing that when you hear it, you'll grab it. You already know the ACX Masterclass is the best and fastest way to build a successful business narrating and producing audiobooks on the biggest platforms in the world, Audible and ACX. Well, it's time to get grabby. The 2021 class is in February. But if you act right now, you can take advantage of a three-month, no-interest, no-fee payment plan. And the class is the lowest price it'll ever be again. So grab it now. The offer ends this Friday night, December 18th. 
Grab this deal at acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Three monthly payments, no interest, no fees. acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Yep, it's time for gift giving for the VO person in your life. And that's probably you. And right now at voiceoveressentials.com, you can get the 20 color LED VO recording sign. It's flying off the shelf. Seriously. It's the holiday present of 2020 from VOE. Now, this multicolor LED sign is perfect for alerting your household that you're recording and to keep it down. It comes with a remote that can control the colors of your secret codes. Get it now at voiceoveressentials.com. And the top stocking stuffer this year? It's the ABS, the adjustable boom stop. No more droopy mics works with a tripod or solid round base. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone. Get them now at voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. Everett Oliver is our guest. Hey, Everett. Having fun? I'm having a great time. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm relaxed. <laughs> that's that's what I like to hear. And uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, in your voiceover career, you get scripts and it's like, how do I do this? And what makes me different? People just think it's about their voice and it really isn't. It's about, like you said, it's about being an actor because that's why they call it voice acting. Although they're... Go ahead. Well, also, one thing that just hit me too is you have to, your scripts need to be marked up. I mean, you really need to go through each and every line before, you know, at least before you really come, you know, go speak, help somebody help you with your audition. Because it just sounds like that actors are waiting till the last minute, just like, oh, I got this script and I got to just get it out. They're not taking the necessary time with themselves to really cope through everything right. and kind of figure out. How can I approach this differently? You know, how can I add my authentic truth to this script? I right. find that a lot. Right. Well, I mean, and what how what's, what are some of the things you can do to mark up a script? I mean, I know when I look at it, it's like, okay, I should probably go up here. And if you don't mark it, you tend to forget and you just tend to ramble through it. Just, well, it's just, I, you know, my thing is, is what what's my truth to the whatever I'm reading? It's, um, you know, I'm right now dealing with a lot of people using their emotions their actual emotions when they're approaching the copy so how do you feel about you know whatever script you're you know approaching that vi that video game character how do you feel about where that character you know should be at that sp specific moment you know are you feeling sad are you feeling happy you know and stuff like that so you know the approach is you know figuring that out and bring it, once you understand that concept, where can I ad lib, you know, to enhance that? You know, they, a lot of people leave all of that stuff out, you know, and they're just all over the place. You know, they're too, here it is, thank you. You're too one-sided. They're just, they're not opening it up, but they're thinking too small, right? you know? So um, one track mind, I should say. And then they're not confident enough too. 
you know, you've got to add all that that when you're making a pot roast, those meats and potatoes and stuff. So that approach is, you know, adding all of these elements to make those words come off the page and be true, you know, right to yourself. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Everett Oliver. If you got a question, throw it in the chat room. We got a few in here. And let, let's go to a couple of questions from our massive audience out there all across the fruited plain and across uh, God's green earth. Um, from, Na let's see, it's Nicole, unless it's Nicole, depending on how she spells it. Nicole B. Harper, question. What is the first thing a new person who has never voice acted should start trying? We'll take an acting class first, <laughs> then go to an improv. That's what they should do first. And then come back, uh, depending on who you are. I'd need to hear you. I would physically need to hear you. I probably would have a, um, speak to you over the phone. Once I um, speak to you over the phone, then I can guide you and tell you. But that's if you're really approaching this for the first time and not know any train, go get some training first, is basically. That's what I would do. Yeah, well, so it's, it's always good to take a class to see if you actually can can do this kind of act, stuff. Who see if you can act, right? Yeah, it amazes me that people think that you know it's like, oh, I, I just read for a living. No, you you, you got to become somebody else every now and again. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, or or the other thing is what people are having trouble is is finding out who they are. That's right. the other main thing, you know, and you can hear that in the read as well because I'm like, you don't know who you are. I can totally tell. So we need to find who you are. And, you know, so that's a challenge, too. Because right. that's when I get dark and dirty and start finding out about their... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a psychologist, apparently, too. <laughs> I, I find that with a lot of voice coaches that you're like, you'll end up sitting on the couch and they're like, yes. well, how do you approach this? And, and yeah, what do you I... really think about that? It's like, mm -hmm. absolutely. George, you got the next question. This one's from Jay Horace Black. Um, he says, what is your schedule for coaching like, and are you booked up through several weeks? And how do we get in to work with you? That's always a good question, right? Um, I'm always busy. What you should do is email me, actors, email me at eovoiceactingdirector.com. If they have an audition, they say to me, they fill out the form on my website and they just tells me what time the audition is due so I can pinpoint it. And then I sometimes call you on the fly. That's my favorite to catch you off guard and ink you in. But yes, I'm always busy. If I'm not busy coaching, I'm busy with the business itself or I'm following up with actors or preparing group classes. So answer to your question is just email me directly. I get the email and then I will reach back out to you. But you have to, you know, um, make sure your voicemails are not full. Dan's <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that mean? Because I call you and your voicemails are full. My voicemail is not full. <laughs> Delete that stuff for crying out loud. Can I tell you something about that? This it. is something that gets people screwed up with iPhones specifically. Mm -hmm. So like you'll go in there and you'll think you've deleted all your voicemail, mm -hmm. but it's in this other place like purgatory or maybe trash or something. Mm -hmm. And you got to go in there and then empty that. And then it clears out your inbox. Just George, I've only had an iPhone for a year. I had to learn that the hard way. George, I'm going to tell you what Dan is thinking <laughs> and what I'm thinking. That's a personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> I say that in a very loving way, but that's a personal issue. You need to figure that out. If you want to be, uh, you know, professional and what you call it, when I'm calling you, I leave a message. Usually the actor calls me back. It's easier for me to speak to you on the phone rather than sit and, and write a book report. It right. drives me insane. Right. It's more efficient for sure. It's more efficient. So, yeah, that's how you. He had a second part, and he said, with Improv Olympic, Improv Olympics, I guess, closing recently, which improv program do you like? What do you recommend? Any any particular, any, any typical, uh, particular type of improv, long, short form, form that kind of um, stuff? I just send somebody to an improv class, or I send them to people who teach it. Um, I believe that there's a second city or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's the second city. I send them there. But I send 
people who train in improv um, to go there. That's what I've been doing lately. I've been sending them to someone specifically, and they're probably like, Everett, stop! Everett, stop! I'm overload. You'll be <laughs> fine. You'll be fine. I'm a giver. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and it depends on where they are, too. You know, I, I'm one of these people also that I'm a believer in where whoever you fit with. You need to be able to work with a coach who you have to have the right fit with. Not everybody fits, you know, like men and women. I have to really listen to you too. Once I understand, and if, you know, depending on like, for example, I wouldn't send you to a, um, I'm a strong coach, strong personality. So I'll get people who are very, you know, they want to tiptoe. And I'm like, oh, I want to break, break that out of you. So I want to send you to a person who's going to really make you step up your game. I'm not going to take, you know, every single client, you know, so that's, I, that's just who my personality is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I did, I do remember one person I sent to, um, uh, there was, a, I had an attorney, one of the voice actors was an attorney and I told him, I said, you need a strong woman to kick you in your butt. I said to <laughs> and physically, I, I, I think Jay Harris is a client of mine. I think he's in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some good improv. Oh, and I think it's coaching. called Second City. Yeah. Tell him just to reach out to me. I have a contact that's in Chicago, and he'll, mm -hmm. he'll get, I'll get that information to him. Excellent. Okay. And then he should put your name in the subject line so I know who you are. That's very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. uh, right on. Interesting question from Sarah Switek. Uh, she, says that, she says, if you're on the East Coast, which apparently she is, uh, but have a broadcast quality home studio. Don't ever say broadcast, broadcast quality on this particular show. It's <laughs> professional quality. If your broadcast means, well, I'm on the radio, or you're not. Or on TV, right. That's right. Uh, is it possible if you have a good studio? We'll just tell you, I'm just going to change that. To have a good, you have a proper home studio. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to get animation work? I believe so. Um, you know, I mean, with COVID happening, there are people looking all across the country for new talent. Um, I will say that I've been getting a lot of copy from actors on the East Coast um, auditioning for West Coast material. So I'm going to say yes. Yeah. But there's also East Coast animation. There's, there's, there's East Coast animation. It's preschool. It's more or less preschool. <laughs> it's not the big stuff that we have out here. Mm -hmm. But the... Um, but yes, I would say she would she would be able to, to she should be able to work out here for us. But you know, here's some loopholes. You know, you've got to have an animation agent, and you have to really be in the union. I mean, let me be clear: there are not a lot of anim there's not a lot of animation that's non-union. There's some. I'm not saying there's some. You know, stuff on YouTube, and there are you know people who are developing the pilots. But the majority of the heavy hitter stuff is all union. Right. Okay. I, Video yeah. games is a different beast. That's a whole little different subject. There are a lot of non-union video games that's out there, too. You don't necessarily have to be in the union as well. So it flip-flops depending on the genre. Yeah. Let, let me ask you about representation for a second, because everybody says, "Oh, I'm going to get an agent, and then I'm going to be on Easy Street." You know. But you know, nice work if you can get it. Uh, and nice if you can get an agent. What's the best way you found it? I mean, because you worked in an agency. What's the best way for someone to actually find an agent that they, you know, that's willing to work with them and that they feel comfortable with? Contacts. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big time networker. Um, you need to find somebody who's at that agency who you know who can pass your name on to the agent. That's, the, that's probably the best thing. I, I do it all the time, you know. I, I'm, I'm an app, so you have to have it. They're not going to, the agents do not have the necessary time to be flipping through their emails, you applying for, you know, new talent. The best way is the word of mouth. So, you know, and to use, well, I can't speak for everybody, so I better not say that, but I will say this. I tell people to use my name in the subject matter, but I, they will, the agents will call me <laughs> and check <laughs> yeah. to make sure <laughs> that I know this person. So, um, but that's the way to go about it. It's all about networking. Yeah. Oh, I would say, I, I think that's true in any business, especially mm -hmm. in, in an entrepreneurial business like voiceover, which some people mm -hmm. tend to forget. It's not showbiz. 
it's right. entrepreneurial business that networking it's it you know it's what you know but who you know is just as know. important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely uh we got to you want to get this last question one last George? one in there yeah, go ahead. yeah. from uh, jensen ogilvy um what's the best way to get better at self-direction when you're doing your auditions <laughs> where do you start with that that's a whole master class in itself right well I, I, you know my i come from an old school agency it's really hard to self-direct mm. You should all, I, you know, I say it. to get, get somebody to coach you. You know, that's really the best way. Self-direction is hard. I mean, I did hear an agent say, um, if I can remember correctly, audition in front of the mirror and record it. Record the audition and then listen back to it. That's so not video, but saying. audio record it, but audio record act it in front of the mirror. Act it in front of the mirror. Interesting. And then Interesting. play it and Interesting. sit back. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, uh, you know, the other thing that I will add to it is do two takes in front of that mirror and then go do something to distract yourself and then come back around for your third take. So that way you're not thinking about it. Have like a brain you reboot. Able, right. And that way you'll have three different versions. So that's one technique. But Play like around a call of duty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, no, you really, it's really, you shouldn't really self-direct. I mean, you know, there's, there's thousands of coaches who are out there, you know, there were workout groups where people go and, you know, they might have the same audition, audition in front of your workout groups, help each other, you know, out on auditions, you know. Absolutely. The workout group is a great, that's a big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, you really need to have people to listen to, bounce things off of, try things. Mm -hmm. I send people to workout groups all the time. I know one actor is probably going to call me after he sees this. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. So, yeah, so workout groups. You know, find a good workout group that, that fits you. And, uh, you know. The next question, I can already predict it, is, Everett, uh, how do I find a workout group? <laughs> Not, Facebook. Yeah, really. Facebook has tons of workout groups, type up uh, voice actor workout groups, they should all pop up. LinkedIn, you know, use your social media outlets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or start then, your own for crying out loud. Start your own, you can. Absolutely. You know, you know George has time, you know. <laughs> Invite George to the workout group. <laughs> He'll check out I, your sound for free. <laughs> well, Everett, in trouble for that. yeah. Everett, it's always great to talk to you and, and, and hear what's going on with you and, and what's go and what's going on in the business. If someone would like to work with you and fill up your ever increasing uh, e in inbox, how can they get a hold of you? My my initials E O at voiceactingdirector.com. That's my email address. And my website is voiceactingdirector.com or everettoliver.com. All right. And it'll go to the same place, so it doesn't really It'll go all the same place. Yeah. All righty. Well, thanks for being with us, and uh, we look forward to when we can all get together face-to-face -to -face one of these days. Yes. For sure. All right. For sure. I'll all see right. you in 2021. Thank you. God willing, and the creek don't <laughs> rise. Anyway, that's not going to happen here in Southern California. No, it doesn't rain. Anyway. All right. Thanks, Everett. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Hello. Hello. Welcome to voiceover body shop is a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on, look at Dan's head, so shiny. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what.
you've heard great things about the ACX Masterclass. Maybe you've been watching it, waiting for the next class, looking for the best price, and knowing that when you hear it, you'll grab it. You already know the ACX Masterclass is the best and fastest way to build a successful business narrating and producing audiobooks on the biggest platforms in the world, Audible and ACX. Well, it's time to get grabby. The 2021 class is in February. But if you act right now, you can take advantage of a three-month, no-interest, no-fee payment plan. And the class is the lowest price it'll ever be again. So grab it now. The offer ends this Friday night, December 18th. Grab this deal at acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. Three monthly payments, no interest, no fees. acxmasterclass.com forward slash V-O-B-S. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Body Shop. All righty, time for Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. Wow, what a year it has been for Source Connect. Wow. Um, they are clearly, uh, it's been a heck of a time because this is really the preeminent tool that's being used to do recording remotely around the globe. And that's what we are all doing now, folks. <laughs> it's recording remotely. So you really need to have the best tools for that job. And 12 years plus running now, Source Connect has really established themselves as being the, one of the best ways to do it because their quality of the, of the tool and the support behind it is what makes it so good. It's not just another software on the internet that runs on a browser. This is software that's been developed, honed, and improved year after year after year, and has been adopted by the studio producers and engineers of the world. One of the reasons it's so prominent and why it's been around for so long is because the plugin was designed, it was initially designed as a plugin to run natively in Pro Tools. And since the vast majority of what's being produced or being used to produce commercials and radio and vi or especially television stuff and film, a lot of it's done on Pro Tools, that's why it's everywhere. So if you want to be working in all those studios, doing all the big gigs, at the very, very least, get yourself signed up with a 15-day trial so you know that it runs on your system and you have an idea of how to use the whole thing. So you can go to source-elements.com and sign up for that trial. They also have two-day passes now. So you can just sign up and then when you're ready, buy a two-day pass for that gig. So you don't necessarily have to commit if you don't have regular clients using it. So get on board, start learning how to use it. And if you can't start struggle through it on your own, or you just want to have some more help, let me know. Go to George the tech, uh, George the dot tech slash S C for my support channel on source connect. Anyway, that's enough. Let's wrap up the show and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening. And thanks source elements. Before, Before time I began, began, there was V O B S dot TV watch or else. Hey! Hey! By, by the way, it, it it is the fifth night of Hanukkah, and we've already done the blessings. So it's it, it's safe. <laughs> so we're we're gonna light the candles and Aww. make you know standing and, pie with the fire extinguisher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. All right, was that well, one lit? No. Okay, there we and, go. And you can tell by the menorah which day it is because the where the it's already dripped all oh, over. Oh, yeah, the wax is all over. <laughs> I think I got it. Hold on. All right. You gotta light it with that candle. That's very important. Yeah. <laughs> this little light of mine. And there we go. Happy Night number what are, what are we supposed to be singing right now? Oh, uh, we're we supposed to be sing. Oh, there's lots of songs we could sing. There's lots of songs. Yeah, we won't get into that right now. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, dear. <laughs> All righty. Well, if I was a rich man. Yeah, we we <laughs> no, don't sing that one. that one. No, not not for Hanukkah. <laughs> Kumbaya. Yeah. There, there you go. <laughs> Anyway, um, next week on this show, we'll be doing Tech Talk number 47? Yep, 47. That's what we're going to tape up here in a minute. All right. We'll be doing that in just a minute. So if you want to stay tuned for that live, you can do that. Uh, and then uh, we're going to be off for a couple of weeks because the 28th, the next Monday that we would do the show, is my birthday. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> no. Good no. for you, Dan. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> you deserve a night off. I think we deserve some time off for the holidays and then start fresh in 2021 and get away from this dumpster fire. Anyway. <laughs> fresh. Exactly. Who are our donors of the week? Let's butcher some names this yeah, time. Go for it. Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Noreen Reardon, Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Antland Productions, Michelle Blenker, Mike Gordon, and Dwayne DeSalvo. Oh, those were easy ones this week. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Those are names that I've read before and probably because they're all subscribers. Um, actually, Noreen is a new one. I think Stephen Chandler and Noreen. Yeah. Uh, those are new names. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we appreciate it. And if you donate, we'll read your name. And then if you subscribe for as little as a buck a month or whatever the PayPal thing lets you do, well, we'll read your name every time. Seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> well, we, we, of course, would like to also thank uh, all sorts of people, you know, aside from the fact that people are donating to the show, which we really appreciate. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Vo source Elements. Boheroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. All righty. Also need to thank uh, Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room tonight. Sue Merlino, who's having a day and a week and a 2020 like the rest of us. Amazingly, her, but still here. her power went off right before the show, and she got it up and running again. That takes guts. Man. Good job to her. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, Tech Talk's coming up next. We really appreciate you watching the show, and uh, but we got to tell you, look, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, and I'm George Whittem, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS. See you later, guys. Happy Hanukkah.